Thanks for watching Morning Live. Now, residents of Riverlee, south of Johannesburg, say that there's been a significant decrease in illegal mining activity in the area since the intervention by law enforcement agencies. Now, specialized task forces have been deployed to the area in an attempt to rid uh, the area of illegal miners. Now, Johannesburg Metro Police embarked on an operation aimed at raiding illegal mining in a bid to restore safety to communities. The operation follows the discovery of five bodies uh, believed to be those of illegal miners in Riverley earlier this month. Now, this after the community took to the streets to protest, saying that they were tired of being held hostage by the illegal miners who were turning their streets into a war zone. So for an update on the situation, we joined here in studio by Johannesburg Public Safety MMC, Dr. Mthini Chwaku. Dr. Chwaku, good to have you with us. Uh, welcome to our studio. Uh, good morning, Sakina. Good morning to your listeners. So in giving this update, I just want to go back to when um, Morning Live went out to Riverley. Yeah. And I remember you saying, um, when I spoke to you, you said that part of the problem was that there was a lack of cooperation or collaboration with the South African police services. But I'm going to pick up on that in just a short while okay. because I just want to start uh, with a, a little clip uh, as we update you on what we saw in Rivoli and what happened subsequently. Okay. And they're inside. So we're just still looking for him here. We saw his blood there. He was actually shooting at the police. We went inside. We found a lot of guns. We found a lot of uh, uh, grenades and all of that inside here. And we saw a lot of, this is a huge operation because here we've got Tendukas. Um, what is surprising us is that we've been doing operation for two years. We've never seen this part here. Even the intelligence of, of Serbs have never taken to us. But through the JMPD, Intelli Intel, we managed to intercept them. We're exchanging fire and then some of them, they ran inside. So this tunnel is goes all the way, but we're going to come back and go inside and look for, for actually them. We found blanket, there are blankets everywhere. And so, and blankets and guns lay inside. So, this is this thing here. These guys are cowards. They go and take videos and show us all these guns and all of that. We told them, we warned them. Uh, we, we don't joke. JMPD Special Forces, they don't joke. We, they ran away even now. They left their blankets and food and everything here. We're not going to tolerate lawlessness here. It's going to be fire, fire by fire. You shoot at us, we will meet your maker. I tell you right, right now. And that is not a, 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 a promise. It's a commitment. We're going to go inside here. We're going to look for you. And I hope this video, it will go to all of those, those who think that they've taken charge on us. We've taken charge here. So, <laughs> MMC yes. uh, Chwaku, so, yeah. uh, you know, this is what you found, uh, you know, and, yeah. and, and I remember on the morning you were also when we were standing there and, and I kept saying to the viewers, the situation is so tense. You yeah. know, people were scared. Nobody wanted to move in or out until there was sufficient daylight or they saw sufficient law enforcement to cover them. And then came you, Dr. Chwaku. We are going in there. Mm. And <laughs> indeed, we went in there. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually very angry uh, with what you asked. And uh, you, you asked me in terms of, as an MMC for public safety, what are you doing about mm. it? And uh, you know, in the EFF, you know, you can't keep on whining, you must do something. You can't be on top and you don't do anything. And I assembled all the, all the special forces within the, the JMPD. Your IOC, your, that's your undercover unit. We've assembled K9 unit. We assembled pops. All of them said, "Look, guys, they're, they're like, they're, there's no like, there's no riots now, so we must all come together." So we had also some of the, you know, the, the, the private guys who were very interested on that. So we formed a unit. Then we said, "Look, we're going to go and look for these guys, and we're going to go to them toe by like, uh, we're going to like find them now, toe to toe." So we went to Riverley, we found them, and then some of them, they ran away, they went inside the hole. Um, we also went, like, when now, because we're targeting not only a Riverley, um, we actually receive hot spots. So there's a deep and deep, you've got another place called Jerusalem. And we found that, hey, geez, it's like a, it's like a head office of these Zamazamas. And then Where's was, Jerusalem? It, Jerusalem is not far. It's, it's not far from um, uh, Riverley. As you go up to Main Reef up here, there's a bush there. 
like they just got pendugas and got all the stuff. That's where actually we found even those, uh, you know, that, that, that big mine with the very lucrative gold. And then, uh, yeah, and then the Serbs, they've never been there. So no, actually everyone was shocked. Um, I was actually arrested, so something that I did not tell you, I was nearly arrested by the, by the so-called National Task Unit. Um, apparently they said there was gonna be an operation that was happening there. Uh, but I said, yeah, yeah, I'm here now. So, so well, well, whatever's gonna happen now, it, this scene is mine. Um, then we chased after, you know, the, the Zamazamas and um, we saw them, they actually, we actually caught them by some surprise, actually. Um, they, they were just chilling and others were cooking and others So were they didn't just, expect you to actually didn't. come in? Yes, because remember I said to you, we're going to Reveille. So they, I said to everyone, just say that we're going to Reveille, all of us. But we had drones, we have undercover units that were there. So they told us they just, everyone is outside, they are cooking and all of that. Then we, we hit them hard. And then we managed to get uh, one, uh, we actually injured one, and then the other just ran inside. And then, and I said, you know what, uh, well, let's go inside. Because, uh, you know, we didn't have any that there's something called the night vision. Uh, you just put in, then you can see people in the dark. And then you got one of the guys with the night vision and said, he must lead in the front, let's go inside. We must go to them. And we went inside. When we went inside, we found guns. Um, actually, we found guns, we found uh, dynamites, and uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so it's a very deep uh, mine, and as you, as I, I spoken to you, that for me it is puzzling that that the, you know the Department of Mineral Energy has not come on board in terms of rehabilitating the area. Um, you know, one of the things I, I discussed with my people, I said to them, why don't you empower you know the local guys? Because local guys, there's abject poverty there. Why don't you just maybe try and legalize this uh, you know uh, this this thing and do what is called a small scale uh, uh, mining? Because what we saw is that, yes, you've got these guys, uh, Zama, Zama, Zamas are like miners, but you've mm. got these security people and others who are robbing them. And these ones who are robbing are the ones with guns. So if you legalize it, you have a warehouse where many these people, they've done their mining, they go to this warehouse, which is much more secure. When they penduga this thing into gold, they are able you know, to sell it in a secure manner. Then you don't have people coming to, you know, to, to, to actually rob you. Because what is happening there is robbery. So if I, if I have gold, I just been underground, I penduga it, then it's, it's gold and it's money. So you've got these guys coming, let's say from Pinoni, coming from West Rand, coming from everywhere. And also it's a gang. Remember when it's a gang, there's the guys with the yellow uh, blankets, the guys, well, no, the guys well, no, with the gray, with the gray one. So there's that war. So when they shoot at each other and robbing these guys who are coming from underground, then uh, communities become a collateral. Then that's what happened. So what we did now is to disrupt them, we took their stuff, we took their pendugas, we took everything. Uh, yeah, so um, we went there yesterday, we were there. Yeah, so the community was very happy. They said they can mm. sleep well now. You asked me, what am I doing? So that's what I did. Yes, yeah. and, and I'm glad that question moved you to action because yeah, too yeah. often um, people in political office, mm. uh, you know, want to kick the can down the road or point the finger the other way. Yeah. You are the MMC. Yeah. It is your responsibility. Mm. If communities are not safe, mm. what are you doing about it? Yeah. So at the moment, uh, we talk about communities feeling safe, but how long mm. is that going to last for? Until we have all forget about Rivoli and mm. what's happened there and move on to the next best story. Look, um, that's what I was addressing to a parade yesterday. Remember, when we got into the public safety, we had to boost the morale of the, of, of the police because most of them, uh, you know, they were crying about they don't have any guns. Some of them didn't have guns. They, they actually graduated without having any guns. We had a lack of ammunition. Um, they haven't got their pay raise for a very long time. Uh, you know, Who so are we talking about here? The JMPD. JMPD. Yeah, JMPD. Yeah, well, so you came in and some of them didn't have a uniform for a very long time. So we had to address all those things. Then they were crying. There's a thing called the PFA. It's like the, you know, this rate of pay. Other people who came in right now, we're earning more than the guys who've been working for a very long time. So when I got in, there was a very, very extremely low morale. You know, there was tough morale. And also, we're still waiting for our cars, by the way. Uh, we, JMPD is still lacking cars. So I'm really busy fighting now with the, with the guy that uh, we've actually given him. There's a guy who actually got a... a, a the, you know, the contract for the, the cars he has not delivered and is making me extremely annoyed because that's what why. What do you mean he hasn't delivered? No, he hasn't delivered because he's supposed to have delivered these cars. For, How many? Uh, look, um, for the specialized unit that I want to launch, establish, I need 100 cars. 
um, so that I'm able to deploy all these crime prevention guys uh, in all the seven sub, you know, the regions from region A and G. Okay. The, the, when you yeah. say he hasn't delivered, some of what the do cars, you mean by that? Has the city paid for it? Cars. And, uh, uh, has the city paid for it, though? Uh, well, well, what depends is that, you know, he must give us the cars and then every month we actually have to give him the money every time. Okay. He must be given, for, for example, we'll, we are still waiting for the vans. There's a list that we've, uh, we've actually given to him through the, this, uh, you know, the, 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 the GMPD, the, the buggies, the normal cars, you know, the sedans. But for the specialized unit, it's a red and advanced tactical unit that will be launched uh, mid-September. Uh, it should have been launched in, in June, by the way, so that we're able, it's going to be an anti-hijack, anti-cash heist uh, unit and the organized crime unit that's supposed to have been launched a long time ago. So, yes, we actually busy with him. We um, say that uh, we needed to get another commitment in terms of when are these cars are going to be, you know, uh, you know de de delivered to us. The, my worry is that uh, that's why you see many JMPDs with a combi. They're all like, you know, squashed like sardines moving all to them together, which is very dangerous. We actually lacking cars. So that is, where, that is where our problem is not. But that should be sorted out August, September. We hope that by the end of September, we actually have all the cars so that we can have what is called a visible policing. Because as you said, um, I said to, to them, I can only do this much. I can do operations and show them what needs to happen. What are the issues in the communities? For example, the issues of drug, the illegal occupation of buildings, but there must be sustainability. Mm -hmm. And we've got regions, there were region A, you've got cops there, we've got JMPD. I said to them, uh, you know, they must, do, they must look at what we did and how we operated in terms of the, you know, did this, did, you know uh, going to areas and, and, and do visible policing. So uh, I spoke to them yesterday, I said, in Reveille and in the area like Deep Slot where I've been, I must never get a call that there's no police visibility or else, <laughs> yeah, heads are going to roll. Because it can be, I cannot... I can't be like a Holy Spirit and be everywhere. I just mm. can't, you know? Uh, yeah. but, but, but then is it that easy to make those heads roll? Because yes. we hear these threats all the time. We seldom see them uh, materialize. So, you know, I wanted to ask you as well about the Panya Panyas, as they are known. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where are they? Where are those uh, warders? Like, were they not supposed <laughs> to be patrolling the streets of Johannesburg, ensuring community safety, as it were? And are they supposed to fall under your department? Look, I'm uh, and was, you know, I don't know where are they. What uh, do you mean? Like, okay, we're briefed by the MEC for, 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 for community safety that yes, they've established some apanya panya right? Um, and the way that they operate, um, you know, it's not that much clear, but I won't be able to really comment because that is the, that's the SEPs, you know, the, the, it's a SEPs issue. So they belong the to SEPs? Chase. Yeah, they're under SEPs, yes. Oh, Remember, okay. it's a provincial thing, you know, on yeah, my I, side. I'm struggling to locate them. Who yeah. pays their salaries? It's the SEPs. It's the SEPs, okay. it's the province. Mina, we're going to be launching the uh, patrollers. The, the, join, the city of Johannesburg patrollers. What patrollers now? You're going to recruit more people. So all the, these patrollers, there are patrollers which are currently patrolling, okay? Mm -hmm. But they've never been formalized. You can see some of them, they are called, you know, they've got their different name, K-9 uh, patrollers and, you know, Kokorochis and whatever. In Alex, they are very, very, they're working very well. Uh, but there are some issues that we need to deal with it there. We just established now at the, in, in uh, the deep slot, and then in Riverley, you've got the community safety guys, which is which is very good. They work with us very well. And you've got the patrollers as well. So they've been patrol. There are people who are patrolling. They've been patrolling in communities. Maybe you must do a story about them. Actually, they are. They work extremely well. And those guys are hard workers. That's why when when I visited region A, B, C, and D, they actually asked. I mean, through because we're coming in. And they said, look, they would like to be formalized. They would like to get a stipend and they would like to work with the JNPD. They have no problem with that. So, Do you have a budget for that? Yeah, hey, I made a budget. You made a budget yeah, of how much? I was fighting there. We fight, we fought straight. Uh, how, how much <laughs> no, you know what happened? They said, did you get and how many you know, patrollers will you be able to formalize? You know, um, I said, look, we, we, we had sort of a budget for 500 uh, wardens, okay, wardens. 
which gets something like 13 to 14,000. What is wardens now? Which wardens? Oh, wardens. Those are the JMPD wardens. Like, I'm a like the Mapanya Panya. No, no, no. I'm a police. Like, I'm a police. Oh, like, actual yeah, JMPD, JMPD yes, officers. Yes, actual JMPD, traffic wardens. Yes. Okay. They will get something like 14,000 to 15,000, somewhere around there. I said, look, um, is it possible that we can just chop this amount? Four, six, eight, twelve, six? Yeah. Like, one traffic warden can be equal to four, but, you know, patronas. And then from there, we managed to get the budget from that. So instead of hiring these patrollers, which are 250, I can able to double the number. You know? So we're going to hire about 700 patrollers. And mm. then we said in each ward, not in each sector. Then those, those patrollers are able to be uh, eyes and ears for JMPD. So that is now I'm bringing in what is called community-based policing. So that they're able, they're able to be eyes and ears. Look at Alex. Alex, I'm getting, I'm getting intel every time. Even at Riverley, even where we were, that was an intel by the public, like those, those patrollers. They work very hard. But the problem is that um, I'm actually even, um, 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 we are going to go to a point where we are going to ask the national to do what's that? It's the, um, what's that thing called, Ganin? Um, the, 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 the grant, we're going to do a grant for them. We are going to apply for a grant. You, if, if, well, what happens is that if you do an EPWP sort of, and then you, you demonstrate that uh, it works and people are working, you can, apply, you can apply for a grant. Okay. So I'm going to, nationally, I'm going to ask for a grant for patrollers. So that these patrollers in Alex, you must do a story about Alex one. Alex ones, they actually can chase a criminal with a gun. <laughs> that, okay. that, that's how efficient that they are. Right. I tell you what, I want yeah. to hear more about this. I want to see all of this in action because yeah. we are recruiting. We are recruiting yeah. here in Gauteng. Yeah. But boots on the ground? I don't know. Maybe you can <laughs> tell me at Morning Live SABC. Yeah. But thank you so much, uh, Johannesburg Public Safety MMC, Dr. Mthini Chwaku, uh, giving us an update about law enforcement operations um, uh, to get rid of illegal miners here in Gauteng.